folks. Hope you all been well and welcome back. Now with the weather warming up, it's now a bit of time for some more outdoor activity. And uh, it feels good to be back in the swing of uh, video making once again. This is my last channel update. I've had a couple of trips under the belt and now this one. So on the agenda for this trip, what I've planned is um, wife and I are heading off to this spot for a, a bit of beach fishing. Because of late, uh, within the fishing community, there's been reports of tailors coming up and down the coast in good numbers. And I'm armed with some local, some pretty good intel from a good mate of mine. And uh, it's looking pretty good that um, you can notice some fish to follow through with the catch and cook. So right about now, we're just about to turn off onto the beach. Uh, just going to pull over, let the tyres down, and check back in. Alrighty. Yeah. Alrighty, so what's important for beach driving is the right tire pressures. And um, just give you a close look at the deflators that I have. My good mate got me these, uh, and they're set to 15 psi. It's pretty good. Just show you how they work, so we'll just click it on. And they'll just automatically, automatically stop once they hit 15 PSI. So there you have it, 15 PSI. Easy as. Alrighty, let's get these um, deflators off and um, head on to the beach. cast out but um, I'll just bring you in for a close-up on the rig that I'm using so basically um, it's a four foot surf rod with an 80 pound braid and um, this is just a 15 pound leader because uh, I don't think we need to go that heavy in the tailor we've got a nice little gang hooks here and um, on these gang hooks just between each hook I've got a swivel just to give it a bit of free movement and uh, easier hook positioning so hopefully we get um, nice hook ups with the fish when they're on the bike So look at that for a presentation there, quite sensational. Any self-respecting tailor is going to smash that. And also, um, because it's a surf uh, position and it is a bit wavy up there, we've got a star sinker. It is free running and that should keep, help keep the bait in position. Alrighty, let's, um, without further ado, let's get this line out. Okay, just set this in the holder and um, let's wait to see if there's any fish going to come to play. So um, 
I'll let this do its thing and I'm gonna get the next one out. Alrighty, so this is my favorite part of um, every trip and fishing. For some people, it's quite painful. It's called waiting. <laughs> so, so far we've been here for about, how long, babe? Uh, half an hour. Half an hour, yeah. And um, got the lines out. But um, if, if I do get a fish now, it would be a bit of a fluke because the, the timing's not quite right. The, the tide is almost at a complete low. And so what I'm waiting now is for the run-in tide. And then the action should start heating up. But um, my wife and I just, um, enjoying some of my homemade charcuterie while we wait so that's uh something that'll tie us over until we get the fish for our catch and cook i eat most of it <laughs> plenty more where that is babe so mm, yeah okie dokie so i'll just bring you in for a close-up to um some of my homemade charcuterie <coughs> so that's my smoked bacon or you can call it pancetta ready to eat as is or they knock up quite nicely in the pasta their wife is holding up a piece there down the hatch how is it dear? it's quite lovely isn't it mm. yeah it's nice and cheese can't have it got beer and meat what else do you need yeah okie dokie so um yeah i'm gonna smash this and uh hopefully it shouldn't be too long until a fish comes along on the other line <laughs> oh they're here do you need a hand? I oh, should be right Catch and cook's definitely happening now. All right, wifey's done to a fish. It's our second one. Oh yeah. Come on, babe. <laughs> Put some elbow into it. Taylor, sweet. Okie dokie, so I'm running out of natural light. Um, I'm tossing up whether I start cooking my dinner now, but um, I have a strong feeling <laughs> that the moment I start cooking or, or eating, the fish are gonna start biting. So I'm gonna hold out. And it's, uh, I, was ho I was hoping to film the catch and cook during uh, the natural lighting, just so that I can uh, give you a better demonstration, but um, I guess it's gonna have to be in the dark now, but uh, not not to worry because um, we'll just go by the the light of our head torches and um, got some LED lights should light it up quite well. But I'll just give you a close up on the fish that we've got here. So I've got two lovely Taylor so far. I mean so far is because I anticipate getting more. And um, one of these bad boys here, it's gonna set me back quite nicely for our dinner later on. Um, I won't reveal what we making just yet um we we'll just have to keep watching and um yeah so as for now probably start filming for a bit and now uh, we'll check back in once we're onto some more fish or when it's time to cook dinner
Okie dokie, so I made the executive decision to um, start getting dinner on. Now, so far we've only got three fish, and I have to say, it's been a little bit slow today. But um, as enough progresses, um, I have the feeling we're getting on to some more fish. But as for now, my tummy's saying I need some food. So, I um, didn't mention what I was going to be making today for our catching cook, but what we are having tonight is fresh Vietnamese spring rolls with the fish and some pork belly. But uh, it's going to be a little bit different to the traditional uh, spring rolls where the fish is steamed and uh, the pork belly is boiled. I'm going to be actually cooking it all on the barbecue with, along with the, the, rice, um, the rice paper, some of the chili and the dipping sauce. Okie dokie, so uh, while the coals are heating up, Wifey's just getting the sauce going. And um, traditionally this is eaten with uh, an anchovy sauce called mum nem. But uh, tonight I'm going to be having it with an alternative. We're going to be doing a shrimp paste. Basically, it's just a shrimp paste that's been diluted with a bit of lemon juice and sugar, uh, some uh, chopped chili and garlic, and it goes with it just as nicely as the anchovy sauce. So I'll bring you in for a close up. So, salt police here is just uh, starting off with the garlic, and uh, over there we have our shrimp paste. There's some lemon, sugar garlic and chili and that is the base of the sauce yep. all right in goes the sugar see if I was doing it I should be saying too much sugar and the juice of a lemon a whole lemon because we like it sour all right just to dissolve that sugar yep in goes the shrimp paste. Is that a fish? No, I've been looking. I'm going to have to move those rods pretty soon because the tide is coming up. Coming up. Okay. Close up. Yeah, so... Um, how's it taste? Good. Good? Makes the chili and garlic. Oh yeah. yeah. The thing I love about these fresh spring rolls is um, the use of all the fresh greens. So these spring onions, they're just gonna be uh, flash fried in oil or what we call it's a scallion scallion oil or spring onion oil just heat up some oil mm. that is smelling scrumptious and that's it turn it off so you don't want to overcook it Okay. Right, that's it, babe. Sweet. Alright, so the coal's hot enough. Let's get the fish on. Okay, so this bad boy here is going to be enough for dinner for wifey and myself. And what I've done to this fish is um, it's only been bled. The guts are still intact, the scale is still on and because we're cooking it on hot charcoal the scales will act like an aluminium foil holding all the moisture and then um, it's going to be quite lovely so um, this fish will probably take about 20 minutes give it about 10, 12 minutes on one side, flip it over and then we'll start grilling the pork belly as well Smells divine. Oh, yeah. Perfectly cooked. It'll be very nice and moist and sweet inside. So um, the fish is coming along nicely. 
I've just gotten some of the pork belly onto the barbecue as well and the next part of the meal is uh, getting some vermicelli on. So Wifey's got this brand here that we use. Uh, so this is a, another type of rice vermicelli. We call it bun hai and uh, they're made into flat cakes of vermicelli. Just bring you in for a close up there. So that's it in this dried form and we are now going to cook it in some boiling water. So how long do you, um, we normally leave it in there for, Beth? A minute or two. Okay, so yeah, let that suck in boiling water for a couple of minutes. It's just like making instant noodles, pretty much. Yep. All right, let that do its thing. And um, yeah, it's almost time to eat. All right. So you can see how the vermicelli is softened up quite nicely. And uh, wife is just laying it on to this mat to drain them, dry them out a little bit. Okay, so we'll garnish it with that scallion oil, as I mentioned earlier. And it is looking sensational. So the fish is cooked perfectly, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> Let's set this bad boy off there. Oh my goodness. Perfect plate uh, size for the plate as well. And the pork belly is crisp and smoky and looking quite lovely. My favorite part of every video, the tasting. So, uh, so we're gonna be doing it a little bit differently this time. Wifey's well, gonna show us how it's done. Right. All right, so, yep, yes, so there we have um, the rice paper. So police is um, just soaking it to uh, make it malleable. And the first thing that goes on, well, some people do this differently, but uh, everyone's got their own style. This is how the police does it. She loves her greens, putting that in there. And uh, hers usually is more like a dumpling than a spring roll. Thanks, huh? <laughs> yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, traditionally um, the pork bellies are boiled pork belly, boiled and then sliced, and the fish is usually steamed with some lemongrass. But um, this is my variation. It's just as lovely, if not even better. Mmm, doesn't that look scrumptious? Looks good enough to eat. There we go. There it is. Do you want the bite? No, you're it. All the way. Mm. As you can see, um, it's, it's sensational. Alrighty, so it's my turn to eat now. This um, brand is just too thin. Yeah. That's the problem. The thing is, the chicken don't overload it. With our bellies full, it's time to uh, sit back and chill, hopefully get a few more fish. So off camera we had, we had another hookup, so let them another fish. Um, today's been pretty much a slow day, but nonetheless uh, it wasn't too bad. 
we ended up to we ended up uh, getting a feed and a couple of fish to bring home so far. And hopefully, as the night progresses, there should be a few more to come. Yeah, so wife and I just got to sit back, and chill, wait for the fish. Now I may, I may or may not film it. Um, it's just that the being that it's night time, the lighting's not very good, and uh, filming is a bit challenging. So the footage may be good. If I get something really exciting, then I'll film it. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the morning. Morning, folks. Looks a bit different here, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. So what happened last night was um, the weather took a wild turn. It got really gusty and windy and the, the tide came up pretty much very close to the car so um, I made an executive decision to make a dash for it and uh, I was hoping to go for a bit of foraging this morning because uh, it was a very low tide this morning however if you look around the weather is looking a bit how you going this has been my view for the last couple of hours um, oh, it's a lovely view though um, I don't know if the camera's picking it up but um, there's a rough seas with pretty high swells and a lot of rain. So um, I don't think today is going to be very eventful. Uh, I see wifey's there just uh, getting her last winks of sleep. She's getting up now. Yeah. Should we go to sleep? Yeah. Anyway, so um, I think I'm going to wrap up this video. Uh, Hope you enjoyed the video uh, with the catch and cook and um, the beach fishing session. So we ended up with four fish, uh, taking a few home and uh, having a lovely feed. And uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.